Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Fresh Friday. I am so excited to be back here again to talk about more pumpkins and squash. And I think I said this the past couple weeks, but I like really mean it this time. We are doing my favorite squash. We are doing the butternut. I'm so excited. This is such a versatile squash, just like last week. You can pretty much bake it, roast it, add whatever seasonings you want, and it's pretty much guaranteed to taste amazing. So. Before I get into what we're making, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about where I got it. So I headed east from Lexington for about two hours on the Mountain Parkway to West Liberty to go to White Oak Pumpkin Patch. And along the way on the Mountain Parkway, there's a bit of a detour that's around the gorge and the leaves are changing right now and it's just so beautiful. It really was one of those drives that make you appreciate how gorgeous Kentucky can be and just really appreciate fall. I love fall. <laughs> so it was really nice. But once I got to White Oak, I was pleasantly surprised by how busy it was. It was a weekday and there were tons of kids running around on the playground or petting some of the animals in the petting zoo. And there were parents everywhere. It was just really nice, like I said last week, to see so many people supporting local. It's just really important now more than ever that people are getting out and supporting their local farms and families and things like that. So really nice to see that. And the important thing was that everyone was social distancing, wearing their masks. I saw employees going around and sanitizing the play areas and the chairs and the picnic tables and any of the like higher volume areas, um, which is something that I haven't seen a lot of places. So I really liked that. It was really nice, but there were so many pumpkins to choose from. There's hay rides out to the pumpkin patch. You can paint your pumpkins there. There's a tons of ton of things for you and your kids to do. Or if you're like me, a grown adult that's going out there, there were tons of things that you could look around at. It was a beautiful scenery. And like I said, I got this butternut squash to cook with. So I'm really excited. We are going to be making a butternut squash and white bean crostini that's topped with some gorzen cheese. Now, we're gonna make all parts of this from scratch, but if you wanted to skip making the boars and cheese, you can just get it at your local grocery store. Um, it's in the cheese area at Kroger, and it's really good as is. I like being able to add in whatever fresh herbs I have or um, different flavors that they don't have available at the grocery store, but do whatever is easiest for you. But this is really great for a fall Thanksgiving dinner. It's really great for any kind of socially distant party that you're having or just really good snack. So I'm really excited and let's get into it. You all know the drill at this point. I am starting to sound like a broken record, but we are going to wash the squash, cut off both ends and throw those away. And then very carefully, you are going to take a sharp and heavy knife and slice your way through. Just protect your fingers, be really careful, being patient is key. Now, once you get this split open, you are going to take a spoon and scoop out the seeds and the goopy parts. You can save the seeds and roast them if you'd like, or just compost or trash the insides. And then once you get that going, we are going to do exactly what we've been doing the past couple weeks. I am going to personally brush on olive oil, but you can drizzle it, just make sure you get a good coating, and then do a healthy dose of salt and pepper. Before you pop that in the oven at 400, we are gonna take a sweet onion and cut it into chunks. You don't want too thin because that will burn in the oven, but just cut some thick chunks, cover them with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper the same way you did with the squash. And then we're gonna put that in for roughly 35 to 40 minutes. You wanna keep an eye on the onions and make sure they're not burning, but you wanna be able to get a fork through the squash. And then this is gonna be for the boars and cheese and we are going to roast some garlic. This is the best thing ever. I would eat this with a spoon if I could, but you are going to cut off the top so that you expose all of the cloves. Um, and then you're going to cover them with olive oil, salt and pepper, and wrap that in tin foil. Look how beautiful the onions and the squash look. This is exactly what you're looking for, a little bit of caramelization on the onions. We're gonna put those in a bowl and then we are going to take the skin off of the butternut squash using a paring knife. Now this is a much, much sped up version, um, but you're gonna wanna be really careful. Maybe let the squash cool, I didn't do that. I've burned my hands so much that I don't even feel it anymore. 
but just be really careful. You want to make sure you get the skin and some of that green and white area as well. Um, you just want a really clean butternut squash surface for blending. And after you have completely dissected your butternut squash, you are going to cube it and put it in the bowl with the onions. And then we're gonna transfer that over to a food processor and blend it until smooth. I kept this smooth because with the beans, we're gonna do those a little bit chunkier so that it mixes well together. Next, I added some fresh thyme. I don't really measure this, so definitely do a little bit less, give it a taste, and then add more if need be. And then after that, I'm gonna add in my white beans. I did a can of Northern and a can of cannellini and rinsed them before I added it in. And then you are going to pulse until you get a thicker, somewhat chunky mixture. The garlic went in with the butternut squash and the onion mixture, and it went about an hour in the oven. You are looking for that golden caramelized. You will definitely smell it, and it will pop out of the casing really easily. Off camera, I added four of these roasted garlic cloves to the ingredients that are listed below, which just included some cream cheese, butter, and some fresh chives, and I blended this in the food processor until creamy. Now for the delicious part, we're going to assemble the crostini. So I sliced my baguette diagonally and then toasted it up, gave it a nice little dollop of the butternut squash white bean puree. And then I'm gonna show you, this is a fancy term called a cannelle. And I don't think this is the official way to do it, but this is how I was taught. And it basically just gives you a nice kind of football shape. It looks very fancy and you definitely don't have to do this, but it added a nice little zhuzh to the crostini. And then I topped it with a little bit of thyme and it is ready to eat. It looks so fancy, but it was really quick to get together and it was really delicious. So enjoy.